wacky world of Multimedia J. I'm looking to squeeze in one more recycling run before this vacation ends, so today's going to be the day that we say sayonara to this Core 2 Duo system. The motherboard and the processor, and of course the Core 2 Duo era in general, although I may keep the stock cooler just for the heck of it. <laughs> I mean, that, that probably still works. But here's the thing. Some people, given recent events, may think that I killed this system on purpose because I took the safety cover off the 4 8 pin something or another there and attached an 8 pin auxiliary connector where there traditionally was only 4. Of course there's two 12 volt connectors there and that's when I started getting the postcode for the motherboard not being any good. So that's partially true. The thing is this board was already flaking out. I thought you know, when that all happened I thought that this would be the better of the two gigabyte boards and for a long time it was but eventually I started having some problems when I tried upgrading the RAM to bring this old system up to 4 gigs of DDR2. I don't know if it was the Kingston RAM or something like that, but even with 2 gigs of the old Crucial stuff in here, I would still get freezes and things like that during the post process with this board. So even this gigabyte board eventually started flaking out. So we have the 12 volt 2x thingy right here. It's nothing too exciting, nothing really to write home about. But, yeah, we start getting the continuous beeps, which means the processor is no good and things like that. Or maybe the motherboard's dead, too. The thing is, though, whereas I can go shopping for DDR3-era boards one last time for the 1090T to give it a new lease on whatever life it has left, the same can't be said for LGA775 and the Core 2 Duo era. Here is the aforementioned final skew of LGA 775 boards that can be bought new on Newegg right now. <laughs> I was ready to get one of these things and give this Core 2 Duo a new lease on life like the 1090T, except for that little detail right there. See that graphics slot right there? That is AGP! Look at this nonsense. Expansion slots, 1X, AGP, 4, and 8, 3 PCI, no PCI Express, for a Core 2 Duo era 775 motherboard. That's probably why you can still buy these things new. Who would buy one of these things? They'd have to be wanting to put legacy parts for the Core 2 Duo era in one of these. That's why you can still buy these things new. I mean, my 2005 system had PCI Express. That says a lot right there. Oh, and by the way, two RAM slots. Ooh, I wonder why this board is still available new. <laughs> Too new from $50. <laughs> and New Egg's probably like, please, someone, please take these things off our hands, please. <laughs> so yes, that's why I didn't get one of these. I'll experiment with motherboards from the DDR3 era for the 1090T, but the Core 2 Duo, nope. Everything else is either out of stock or second hand. And I really don't feel like rolling the dice on secondhand computer parts. To verify that I'm not completely nuts, we have just enough hooked up for this thing to work again. If it were gonna work, let's push the button. <laughs> what? This computer is. Okay, disk boot failure, but that's with the stable RAM. I already got rid of the garbage kinks and they kept flaking out. Okay, let's try the 8-pin connector again just for the heck of it. Okay, let's try this again with the 8-pin auxiliary. This gave us a postcode last time. I thought it destroyed the processor, but it actually is 12 volt times 2. Hmm, make sure the fan doesn't start spinning. No postcode, even with the 8 pin thing and the cover taken off. I don't know if it actually uses that 12 volt circuit. Hmm. It's interesting how sometimes reseeding the RAM can do so much. Okay. Well, that cancels my scrapyard run then. <laughs> Disk boot failure. More of these things to work with. 
You know, how many times has this system died and come back like this? <laughs> well, I guess this now means I have a power supply shortage, because the various systems I want to get working don't have enough hardware powering them all. Bizarre. Very bizarre. This does mean, though, that with two gigs of RAM, it's a little gimped for running an OS these days. Want to get it to at least four with something reliable. So that's going to require a crucial kit. I will not be buying the cheapest two gigs I can find. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Well, this was the more reliable of the two gigabyte boards, and now it looks like that's going to keep right on going. Wow. <laughs> By the way, those of you wondering about the intro, this was originally supposed to be chilling at Jay's Geek House, because I figured, oh, the computer's dead, let's dismantle it. That's, of course, Tuxedo's former power supply. This is now officially upgraded to full-blown WWMJ, but we'll film the rest after I get done with the shopping trip. Would have been a little confusing for folks to say, oh, hey, why did you pull that one out of Tuxedo? You didn't take it apart. I knew the motherboard didn't work. Well, spoilers averted. It's just bizarre how this thing just started working again like that. Unlike... <laughs> no, I will not put its successor back into a system. <laughs> that board I know I've about had enough with, so that one can go away, but I can't throw it out today because it's currently storing as processors, serving as processor storage. I should put the RAM in there too to store the RAM in an upright position as well. It would help keep the dust off the contacts as well too, to keep it in a board, even if it was just storing components. <laughs> this has been a rather interesting vacation. Yeah, Christmas put a dent in all the experimenting with computers here, but uh, assuming the job situation works itself out and history doesn't repeat itself tomorrow, I've got some purchases in mind. This does make me feel like a moron, though. I got the less efficient and hotter running, no doubt, processor of these two systems working inside this thing. Now I feel like I really screwed up yesterday. Oops! And just like that, the trip is over, the day is just about over, and I'm just washing the uh, bedding and stuff so I can put the pillowcase and some sheets and turn the mattress and stuff like that. All that stuff you're supposed to do like once or twice a year. Plus, I bought a new pillow, so I figured, eh, might as well wash the pillowcase. And if I'm washing the pillowcase, let's wash everything else, too, while I'm at it. Not going to be good, though, on a night when I have to set alarms, because when everything's all soft and freshly washed, it kind of gets in the way of, shoot, I wish I could sleep without an alarm. <laughs> well, since we're wrapping up the vacation, let's wrap up the rest of the stuff over in the project area. So here is where we proceed from here, and it's not a very good path indeed. Actually, we have ourselves quite a bit of gridlock, where one upgrade has to finish before another can proceed. So it is going to be very, very stop and go with things until some of the parts that are going to be swapped have been swapped. First and foremost, the flaky old gigabyte board is serving as full-blown parts storage now for the uh, old processor, the 1090T, and the RAM that went with it. It will continue to serve this role until something, until its replacement arrives. Now I was looking at Newegg, and the Asus boards that are on Newegg for this generation are an insult to anybody who's serious about building computers nowadays. There's little design choices that have completely turned me away from Asus. So we will not have an Asus board in the 1090T system. Rather, I'm going to go ASRock. I've heard lots of nice things about ASRock, and they have boards that are designed better with what purposes I have in mind. Even this Core 2 Duo era board is a better design than some of what Asus is putting out these days. So, we'll, do, we'll take that route. However, with the Silver Bullet, it will stay Core 2 Duo, we'll keep trying to run this thing into the ground and really kill it if it'll actually stay dead. <laughs> There will be a DDR2 upgrade to max the board at 4 gigs and uh, RAM speed, who cares. Just get two more of what that was and then call it with that. Quite frankly, I just don't want to buy the cheapest RAM on the market again and get burned like I did with that Kingston stuff last go around. However, the power supply will be going back into the silver bullet. This power supply specifically. Tuxedo's power supply is actually in monolith right now. That's an 80 plus silver. 
but I don't need 750 watts on today's systems. The wattage is way lower. Both processors and graphics cards are getting more power efficient in this day and age versus what was available back in 2010. Yeah, huh, that thing. So I don't need the kind of wattage that I used to, especially when I'm deliberately planning Monolith to only on Monolith only having a single graphics card and never playing with dual graphics ever again. So here's the situation. So I want to go shopping for a power supply for Monolith. That power supply goes into Monolith, Monolith's power supply goes to Tuxedo, and as you can tell, the silver bullet is more of a sure thing <laughs> right now than Tuxedo is, except I want to get the motherboard, see how the 1090T, da da da, get a secondary system again, so it's one thing after another, after another, after another, after another, then we gotta figure out what to do about the 2005 system, which is now in Fossil. This case can still be used for something. It's in nice shape. I want to see if I can fix the door mechanically so it actually stays closed. There's a plastic piece that broke off that closed the door previously. I think I can make some kind of hack job replacement. As for Fossil, we'll do some experimenting with the hardware that's in it before one step at a time and a baby step at a time before we start really fiddling around with uh, different hardware and whatnot or go looking specifically for low power hardware to not generate a lot of heat. I do have some more plans in mind, but I will experiment with the equipment that's already in there, including the power supply that came out of the Silver Bullet and the 2005 system. I will not put the Core 2 Duo inside that old rotted... well, no. <laughs> For now, at least. I want to do my experiments with a hotter, less efficient AMD processor from the mid to late 2000s. Core 2 Duo stole the crown from AMD in the dual core... Or, yeah, in the dual core world meeting with Conroe and things along those lines. So, uh, yeah, we'll keep everything as is with this stuff. That goes back in the Silver Bullet. Tuxedo gets Monolith's power supply, which is actually its power supply. Monolith gets a new power supply. It's like shuffling cards. <laughs> It's like shuffling cards. Eventually, everything, of course, I already, I'm looking at an ASRock motherboard to get the 1090T system going again, which, uh, of course, we can, you know, get that going and all that beautiful stuff, and there will be plenty of equipment shuffling going, ar going around, but even when we're done shuffling equipment, that still leaves nothing for the Delosaurus. There it is. Little door or doorstop asaurus, as it were. That's a mechanical project to figure out. It also leaves nothing for this nice case with its clear coat and its nice finish. You know, the paint job on this old Antec case reminds me of a car. You know, with the clear coat and how shiny it is, and there's only a few permanent marker marks that'll come out with some rubbing alcohol. So this is a case, this is actually also the case that runs so quietly that a mechanical drive's clicking noises sounded like a coffee percolator when this used to run the backup system for Dad. So, ultimately, what runs off of what? That's what we need to figure out. Also, what can we do with Ryzen on the horizon? If I want Monolith to go to an AMD Ryzen-based system and end up with Skylake as a backup as the secondary system. What the heck? I never thought I'd see the day when I would be flirting with the possibility of an i7 Skylake 6700K as a backup processor. But that's the way this game is played. Advancement, advancement, advancement. And that is already off. It's about time to start editing things, wrapping things up, calling it a night. The bedding should be finished in the dryer very shortly, but assuming the bottom does not drop out tomorrow, assuming that doesn't happen, assuming history doesn't repeat itself, if the bottom does not drop out tomorrow, it is going to be an absolute gridlock of computer upgrades to get everything to where it needs to be. And there is still plenty of questions to be answered as to where we go from there. But that is something that I will worry about when we get to it. In the meantime, once again, the silver bullet dies and comes back. Specifically, this Core 2, well, this Core 2 system has already done that as well. That's a RAM upgrade, but it's not important compared to what lays ahead for that thing's replacement. Well now, I suppose I could clean and declutter the project area, but, you know, I could tidy things up. But we're not done-done with these computers. 
for quite some time yet. And this isn't even touching what I'd like to do with music, the keyboard setup with the musical keyboard, the MIDI setup. We will have... I haven't even talked about what to do about that old compact laptop from 2010. That thing's still sitting, not being used. There is much to be done, and much to get folks thinking, Ha oh, oh, ha, yeah, he says he's not a computer channel. I certainly... <laughs> his, but his actions show otherwise. Yeah, yeah, let the guffawing continue, but I don't like leaving projects unfinished. This has been an absolutely fun Christmas break. Thanks for watching, everybody. Till next time, this is Multimedia J signing off. Thanks for stopping by. Assuming the bottom doesn't drop out tomorrow, this isn't over.